right? So it was basically, you were, the only reason that the clones existed was to uh, serve the purposes of, of, of the higher power, which was the original person who got the clone. So a person like you and I could go to this company and say, I want you to clone me and raise my clone. And then when a the clone gets to a certain age, I want to have a good kidney. I want to have good, a good heart, good lungs, all that, right? So what one of the clones finds out that this is not going on. So the clone comes back and says, I went back to the room and I saw that they're not, we're not going to heaven. They're they killing us, you know, this, and this is all fake and, and everything else. And all the other clones were, were, were like, what are you talking about? That's not true. This is, you know, we, we, every day when we go to class, this is what we've been taught for years. Like, what are you talking about? And, and in a way, being black is the same way, you know, like you really think that they see you as a fellow human being. You know, like, like, like we really think that we are part of the American dream. We, we, we really think that we are uh, participants in the prosperity of America, that we are whole, you know, whole beings of that. We really think that we're being invited to dinner to eat when, we're, we're, when we really are the dinner. You know, we really are the, 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 the fuel that feeds America. So, so we get raised in a certain way, get raised in a certain environment, get exposed to certain media and messages about ourselves uh, on TV and on the radio, we get certain types of education that, that keeps us contained and controlled. And all of this is designed to manage us so that we become these full grown adults who can then go serve our masters. You know, and, and serving the master, mean, my, it might mean, uh, you know, entertaining the master. It might mean working for the master. It might mean giving our money, right? You know, going to work every day, bringing home money so you can give it right back to the master. You know, so, so in a way, I think that there are those of us when you talk about what it means to be a, a conscious black person, when you when you have consciousness, it reminds me of that movie where somebody told me, thank you, it's called The, the Island. You should watch it. It's called The Island. And mm -hmm. it reminds me of when you have that one person who's in the system who says, wait a minute, this, this ain't what it is. I've been outside the system, and I see that there's a whole universe of possibility that we should have access to, but we don't have access to because we were born in a cage and didn't even know it. So I, I feel that black people were born in such a cage, whether it's the political cage, Democrat or Republican, which one are you going to pick? That, that's how you, you know, they, they, they fool you into thinking you're empowered by picking the Democrat or the Republican when you don't have any power or education. You know, okay, go to school, work hard, go, go in student loan debt so you can serve us, you know, so, you can, so we can get all your wealth. And we'll give you this magical piece of paper called a college degree, which ain't worth, ain't worth a monkey's ass. You know, and, and, and so, so at the end of the day, it's like, we have to question all of that. We got to leave all of that and, 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 and figure out a new way to live because none of this is built for you. None of this is built for you to be successful. So, so, so to me, and I'll, I'll let you finish up, Dr. So you get the last word, but, but to me, it's, it's the more you know about the system and how it works, the more you understand why black people on average do not succeed in that system. Right. Well, you, you, you're absolutely right. See, see, see that book behind you? <clears throat> see that book of Power Knox? Look at the back, but look at the back page. What does it say? Look at the cover. No, on the, the back cover. <clears throat> yeah. The back look, cover. Right, yeah. And see what happened. That book came out in 1997. <clears throat> I wrote that. And see, that's the same year that The Matrix came out. What I've been telling black folk is you've been enjoying the fruits. Black folk have been enjoying the fruits of a social illusion. Mm. That's why, and, and that book was put out. Guess who picked that said it's almost saying Matrix. You know when the Matrix movie came out? Yeah. yeah. The Matrix movie is saying what's on the back of my cover there. Matrix that blacks are enjoying an illusion, social illusion. That's why those all those Matrix movies are so effective. You ever notice in those movies that the primary characters were black folk? And that and that and that and that the uh, the fortune teller was black, the lead captain was black, and just said that, that they were enjoying an illusion. And what I'm telling you right now, that and all my books tell you this that black folk right now have no friends, no friends, just like in the movie, and no allies. My book was out at, at just the same time, right a little before that, before the Matrix came out, okay? And it was, it, they, you have no friends and no allies, contrary to what you've been taught by your political leaders, your social communities, and your, your, and your pastoral services, is that you have no friends. That, and the, let me give you the points on it. In 19, in, on the eve of the Civil War, 98% of all the people in America, there's only 2% between that and 100. 98% of all the people in America were totally opposed to the freeing of blacks from slavery in America. That's a national survey. 
That's a fact. 98% was totally opposed to freeing blacks. Now, here you are right now, 100 years later, 150 years later, and guess what the new surveys are saying show me now? That the amount of hatred towards black folk in America has, has subsided only by 10%. That 88% of the whites in America still don't have any taste for or hate or liking or kinship or being closely identified with black folk. That in your, in your social integration, there is a quota system which says that white folk will accept black folk up to about five or 6% as a quota. And that they, when you hit that quota, white folk will go on alert. And because they're they awfully afraid of black folk being dominant in anything. And then so if black folk, they let black folk associate with them, come to school with them, join an organization with them until the percentage in the neighborhood gets up to five or 6%. And between five and 6% whites will start moving out of the neighborhood. They'll put their houses up for sale. They'll withdraw from the school and take their kids into another school. They'll move out of town or they'll leave the organization. Whites, are, whites do not and that's, do not want to be affiliated, associated with you. That's why we're more segregated today than we were in 1954. Now, with immigrants coming in the country, 64% of all the immigrants coming in this country do not like black folk. They've been taught and been acculturated to feel they are better than black folk. And they, and they act that way. That's how they get the benefits. You, they, they demand benefits. You demand nothing. You are the guest. They turn everything upside down. In this country, black folk are supposed to be the native population, the native special exceptional people. Immigrants are supposed to be guests. They split it over where black folk become the guests and the immigrants that get all the benefits. That's why I said to you last, last week that one of the things I'm pushing now, when people say, well, Dr. Anderson, we read your plan. Now, what's the, what's the next step on the plan? As I told you, the next step is I want all your black listeners to stop sitting around looking at TV and start getting out right now and trying to form chapters of what I call the, the Harvest Festival Day. Plan for a Harvest Festival Day that come August every year, the second week in August, the first or second week in August every year, make sure you plan a Harvest Festival Day where black folk can come together at the local levels and nationally and say, we are special people. We're exceptional people. Do not try to, don't not try to Equal, equate us to immigrants coming into the country from Asia, Arab, and Hispanics. Quit putting out that big lie that all people have contributed equally to the development of this nation. That's a lie. When black folk for 360 years doing being slaved, Jim Crow segregated, exploited, beaten, whipped, and lynched, it was only black folk. Quit trying to equate gays and midgets and women to black folk and say, we are special people. And if you're gonna keep bringing all these immigrants over, put us into a special class. And we want, I want a special week a special annual day called the Harvest Festival Day every year in August, sec first or second week in August, just like everybody else has a, has a special occasion that unites them. As I've told you last time, Jews use Passover to unite Jews and to strengthen them and give them a sense of pride, a sense of direction, a sense of cohesiveness, a sense of togetherness. That's what the, that's what the Passover is for, specifically for that. That's why when, they, when we talk about St. Patrick's Day, the Irish and the English are gonna come together every year and try to look like them, wear green, wear certain kind of clothes, wear, wear shamrocks, anything to identify, say, we are a special group of people in St. Patrick's Day. Then comes, then comes the next thing, come, you'll get, you get uh, Cinco de Mayo, but Hispanics, and we imported them in here. Half of them can't read and write, but we import them in here. We imported their poverty in here. We've been trying to compensate them, correct their, their illiteracy and their poverty, giving away the resources that belong to black folk. They'll have a Cinco de Mayo day. They say, we are special people. And they say, when Cinco de Mayo is a day we chose because down in Mexico, the French whipped our asses. We're gonna celebrate that ass whipping when we get to America. That's called Cinco de Mayo. So they come together and have a special day and go out and parade and celebrate a negative. And, that, and that's, in, that's in May. Then, they, then come, here comes Juneteenth, black folk. They're gonna go out and try to celebrate a negative, saying, we're free, we're free. They're trying to celebrate a negative rather than a positive. They should be celebrating a positive. And that's why 4th of July comes. Here comes, here comes whites celebrating the 4th of July. That's their holidays for all the white immigrants. And they, and they celebrate the wrong damn day. The, 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 Constitution, I mean, the Constitution wasn't ratified on 4th of July. It was ratified initially, introduced on, and signed on June 2, July 2. And then and that rather than July 4th. And then they wasn't totally about, three quarters ratified until about August or September, and the last person said, I have a whole damn year. 
but whites celebrate the Fourth of July. And but what what about black? But what do they celebrate? Well, we got nothing. Yes, you do. You got you got to have a harvest festival date. That day is when you come together and say we are special people. We're not coming here to celebrate no damn negative. But march on Washington, in 1963. What we celebrate? Well, we're gonna march on Washington for an ass after had ass whipping. And we. Hold on a second, okay? Okay. Hold on a second. All right. Uh, so everybody, uh, while we wait for Dr. Anderson to come back in, I want to we'll let you guys know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to Dr. Paul Anderson. He's the author of the books Powernomics, Black Labor, White Wealth, The Black History Reader, and uh, Dirty, Dirty Little Secrets 1 and 2. Uh, his website is powernomics.com. That's powernomics.com. So uh, feel free to go take a look at the website uh, when you get a chance uh, and uh, check out the books. Also, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, then make sure you subscribe. Uh, and if you're on Facebook, please take one second, share the video. Please share, share, share. Uh, we would really appreciate that. Heather and Devon, everybody, please share it to your personal page so other people can get this knowledge. Uh, everybody who's on YouTube, uh, take one second, hit the thumbs up button. Everybody who hasn't hit it, please thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. That's very, very important. Dr. Anderson, uh, you, you, as you were saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. Thanks for waiting. I, I left my car windows down and rain is rain outside. Just raining just two days ago. I said, damn, I can't have a second to rain in my car. <laughs> Let us now. And I get this is my little sports car. And I said, let me run and try to save this car. But what I was saying to you that I want to I want a harvest festival day. And I want every I want to start with your group. You got some of the smartest, most conscientious black folk in America and outside of the country. I want them to start using all their efforts and, and motivations to get out and say, how do we form come together, either through the church or our community organizations, and start demanding and promoting a harvest festival day in the, in the second, either the first or second week in August every year, where we all come together with a, in a festive attitude. Not, not, a, not a moaning, not, not celebrating getting your ass whipped crossing the PD River uh, or, or going down there or going uh, 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 march on Washington and all that kind of stuff. No, things acknowledging <clears throat> the, all your major achievements, acknowledging the fact that you were the economic engines that drove the development of this nation. <clears throat> I, I, and the fact that I got millions, millions of things that black folk have done, not millions, that's I'm a little lying there, that's, that's a little lying, not, I mean, we got hundreds of things that black folk have done, significant things in terms of what they created and invented. And in most of the major holidays, we were the people that brought, that brought about, spun, that got, made it possible for this country to acquire the Louisiana Purchase because of whipping, whipping uh, the ass of, uh, of, the, of the French. We, got, we were the people that, got, uh, that made it possible for them to acquire and annex the Southeastern uh, United States. You know, and what I'm saying is all kinds of things that black folk have done that, that triggered economic development, land acquisition, and wealth and power in this country. And then I want them to take credit for it. So they come together every year as a family and celebrate and have, have discussions about the things we've done and what we're going to do. And we practice things and we tell all of our politicians, here's our agenda. If you're going to run for public office, we want you to you do this and come back to us next year and report what you've done. If you ain't going to do a damn thing with black folk, do not look for our votes. We're going to be an independent power structure. And we're going to come together with a better festive attitude. You can do all your cooking and barbecuing and picnicking on that day. You're going to have activities so these young kids can come together as a unity and support and love each other. It's a harvest festival day starting every year. We're going to have them every year at the same time. After, they sell this, after whites have their July 4th, we're going to have our August, whatever it is, the second weekend, second Saturday in every August. Okay? All and right. can ask, your kid, ask your students to go out and do that for me. I don't usually ask blacks to do very much in the way I'm that independent. I want them to, I want them to pr push and tell every elected politician, if you're going to help promote, establish a national holiday for black folk in August, second Saturday in August, then don't come look for no damn black votes. And we're going to tell you what we want, and we don't want anything that we can't measure. We can't measure and count it and take it to the bank. We don't want it. No more telling about, well, if I get elected, I'll give you, I'll put some basketball courts on the, in, the, in the black neighborhood, and, and, and I'll hire me a black secretary. I don't want to hear any more of that crap, okay? All right. Give a long way to so everybody, National Harvest Day is the second Saturday of August, so mark that in your calendar. Um, uh, I'll try to put together some kind of event or something like that. Um, I know that we're, we were taking um, our, our investing seminar to Los Angeles around that time, so I think I'll, I'll try to coincide it with National Harvest Day. So that'd be, that'd, that'd be very good. Thank you. I, I'd appreciate that. And say we, we are a special people, 
we're going to come talk about all the good things we've done. I'm not talking about no marching. No one is marching, taking ass with it. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about things that we've created in spite of being slaves. We have, we have black folk, um, black folk are exceptional people, period. And, to, and I'm like, and we are different from anybody coming from Africa or the Caribbean. We're the only people who came to this country who were stripped of everything, stripped of our dignity, our pride, our humanity, stripped of our culture and our hits and our language, stripped of our ability to, to enjoy the fruits of our labor, stripped of having a family, stripped of, and stripped of denied the right to own and control, denied the right to have an education. And so I can go through a thousand things. You are special people. And that's, what, that's gonna be a special day for us. And I want to be recognized and I need you to help me do that. And, and, and use your student, tell them all, oh, don't just listen, tell them to go out and find, get on, get on the social, get on the social media and start promoting it. And we're gonna identify the, the second Saturday in every, um, in every um, uh, August, okay? Got you. All right, everybody. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, his books uh, are called Powernomics, Black Labor, White Wealth, The Black History Reader, Dirty Little Seekers One and Two. His website is powernomics.com. That's powernomics.com. Uh, also, he runs a think tank, uh, the, the best black think tank that I know of. Uh, it's at harvestinstitute.org. That's harvestinstitute.org. So I hope you'll go there and support. Uh, National Harvest Day, second, uh, second Saturday in August. Uh, I, as I mentioned to you guys, I'm going to bring uh, my investment seminar, the one that we did in Philadelphia. Chicago's the next city. Chicago is, is July 20th. And then we're going to go to uh, uh, Los Angeles. So I think I'm going to set up uh, the time that I go out there to be the, uh, to coincide with National Harvest Day. So I'll keep you guys posted on what we do there. Uh, also, uh, last but not least, uh, don't forget that we are on iTunes and SoundCloud, so you can download the podcast there. And those of you who want to join our investing masterclass, every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, we meet and we talk about uh, investing and uh, how to invest in the stock market, uh, how to how to think like an investor, how to change your family wealth trajectory for the next 10 generations. Uh, so if you want to take a look at that, please visit drboycemasterclass.com. That's drboycemasterclass.com. And actually, because you're on the podcast and you're part of the tribe of intelligent black people, you can actually get half off uh, by using the code word Powernomics. So use the code word Powernomics, you get 50% off. So feel free to join the masterclass at drboycemasterclass.com. So Dr. Anderson, I want to say thank you very much for your time once again. Uh, it has been awesome uh, to talk to you. Uh, uh, did you have anything to say before uh, we head on out? No, just the biggest thing. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna test all this intellectual activity that you stimulate with your students all the time. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna go check my see how many of them go buy those damn power and all library packs. One time you say that boy, there was a flood of. I call that corporation. They said. Boyce Walker told me to go buy those books. Damn, they didn't go buy them. <laughs> so, and, and, so and, and, and I said, good. And I said, I want them to read them. I said, please, don't buy them just for, because it's what he's told you to buy them, but read them. Because right now I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of black folk being misled and bullshitted by everybody on earth. That's why we don't have anything. And it's called under the doctrine of unequal exchange. And so I'm not you to buy the books. I don't want you to be uh, suffering the block or unequal chain. I want you to get, as, as you just indicated, get a massive amount of education. Right? Every book is almost a PhD for you in, in understanding issues. So tell them to go get that library pack on the powernomics.com and get all five of those books of DVD for $99. And, I'm gonna, and I know you can do it because you've done it before. And I love you and respect you. And I want you to keep for knowing the Black Business School, okay? All right, my friend. Thank you very much, and thank you all for uh, hanging out with us today. And uh, you guys, I'll be I'll be back around later on today at theblackfinancialchannel.com. I'll be giving you uh, uh, stock market updates and all that good stuff. Uh, as you guys know, we, we we talk about a little bit of everything. Class is always in session. Uh, you can't hang out with me for more than a couple months and not be at least twenty percent smarter than you were when you first started. So, uh, so this is so we, you guys know we do this all the time, all day. Dr. Anderson, we be in there all the time uh, because uh, we're on a mission. We're on a mission. We're gonna change the world, and I have no doubt that it's gonna happen. And ain't, ain't, it can't stop, won't stop, ain't never gonna stop. So, so everybody, give Dr. Anderson a digital round of applause. Please thank him. Uh, you know, give you know, throw up some emojis and some thank yous, uh, and uh, he'll be back next week. Uh, 2 15 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's Powernomics Thursday on drboystv.com, the home for intelligent black people. You guys take care. Have a great day. And thank you again, Dr. Anderson. And I, I appreciate and love all of you, okay? All right. Take care, bye, everybody. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.